Hey, it's Abdullah and I've been using the official release of Android 12 on the Nokia X20 for the past few days. So what has changed? What can you expect? And are there any bugs that I've experienced so far? Let's find out. In order to get the best possible experience, I did a hard reset right after updating to Android 12 and would recommend you do the same. As inconvenient as it is, it's the only way to eliminate any issues that might be caused by incompatible apps and problems that Nokia Mobile don't have control over. So let's start with what's new. Of course, the biggest thing is the complete overhaul of the design language on Android 12 compared to Android 11 and before. And I'm happy to report that the X20 now supports Monet for some basic theming options depending on your background. There's a new wallpaper and style screen with the ability to change colors and change the grid settings. So it automatically detects the colors in your home screen and then gives you all these suggested colors, or you can choose your own out of these four selected colors. You can also now adjust the app grid size. Another new thing on your home screen is the app suggestions. So you can access them from the home screen settings. Here they are. And once you enable them, if you go back to your home screen and remove some of your docked icons, you start getting these suggestions based on your own usage. And you can get up to five suggestions. They sort of replace your fixed dock icons. Android 12 also finally brings the ability to capture long screenshots. So if you press on the volume down and power button, you will get a new option that says capture more. You press on it and you can finally capture more than just exactly the dimensions of your screen. There's also a completely redesigned widget screen where all the widgets are better grouped into their own apps and with a new search functionality as well if you're looking for a specific widget or a specific app. And of course, there are some new Android 12 widgets, such as the new clock widgets, which match the new material you design language. There's a new redesigned notification bar with bigger notification toggles, as you can see. So you view four, and then if you expand, you can see up to eight per screen. And the notifications themselves are better defined. You can also access the power button now from the notification bar. Google has added a new search bar on top of the Google feed screen, as if we needed one more way to access the Google search functionality. The new settings screen has been completely redesigned and all the icons are now black and white which look better but makes it a bit more difficult to actually find the icons just based on visual cues alone. Notifications get their own separate menu now so it's easier to fine-tune your notifications this way. Inside the battery settings, there is a new super battery saver mode. And here's what it pretty much does. So it restricts applications, reduces the brightness, limits the CPU GPU speed and apply black wallpaper and simple layout. Under battery usage, the graph only shows you up to three hours ago, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't know why it doesn't show you the full graph like it used to. In the storage settings, you have different grouping than before. For example, now images and videos are separate, no longer grouped together. There's also a separate tab for documents and other. And the system now takes up to 12 gigabytes of storage for some reason. In the display settings and under the lock screen, you can now allow access to the wallet from the lock screen and quick settings. Inside accessibility, you now have extra dim setting, which you can also customize. So this actually takes the phone's brightness lower than the minimum brightness that you usually have access for, which is ideal if you're trying to use your phone in a pitch black room, for example. And you can select exactly how bright or dim you want it to be. In accessibility and inside system controls, you finally have access to one-handed mode. So if you swipe down from the bottom edge of the screen, you bring the top of the display down, making it easier to reach the top without any problems. Also in accessibility, under the live captions tab, you get more fine tuning over what you want to see. So you can select the language, you can hide profanity and so on. For those of you who don't know, the phone automatically captions whatever video you're watching, which is pretty cool. With Android 12, you get a new privacy dashboard as well. So this shows you all the apps that used your location settings, your camera, your microphone, and more in the past 24 hours. And tells you exactly when every app had access to these features. Another privacy feature is that whenever an app is using your camera, the phone will display a green camera icon at the top right edge of your screen, letting you know that there is an app utilizing the camera at the moment. And finally, safety and emergency get their own settings menu now. Now, when it comes to performance, it feels both better and worse at the same time. The animations on Android 12 are very nice and kinetic scrolling has been enhanced. 
so the device feels more responsive when you're scrolling through menus and responds a bit better to even the simplest of swipes. But the frame rate isn't as stable as before, meaning that you'll see a lot more dropped frames, especially when you're multitasking. I hope this is something that can be fixed and worked on with a future update. There's no issue of speed as everything feels pretty quick to open. In terms of battery life, I've noticed a nice improvement so far. The device consumes less power when it's not in usage, which helps extend the battery life by a few hours. When using the device, it's about the same and I'm getting about 8 to 10 hours of screen on time. As for bugs, so far I've faced very minimal bugs. For example, the screen usage time since last recharge always shows zero now, so it's clearly not working. You can still see how many hours you've used the screen, but only if you go to the battery usage. There are also some visual glitches that are rare, but sometimes do happen. And right after installing the update, the phone's performance was slower during the setup process which isn't too uncommon but worth noting. After everything was set up, it went back to about normal. I've asked some of you on Twitter to report any bugs that you've noticed so far, so here are the ones that have been reported to me. Levente told me he's having issues with Bluetooth earphones where audio quality gets distorted while listening from YouTube music. After testing it myself, I could replicate it when I'm using the Nokia ANC earbuds. And in order to fix this, you can download an app such as Wavelet that allows you to control the equalizer and from the limiter settings, you can adjust the post gain and reduce it to a minimum. User Quitian Dongtian, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, has reported that while sliding the brightness bar in super dim mode, the screen flickers. As you can see, I don't have this issue on my unit. He also reported that in developer options, running services sometimes don't display the full list of applications that are running in the background. And I've also noticed this myself, as you can see, when you scroll up here, you still can't access the bottom of the list. So that's another bug. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. So far, I will give the update a 7 out of 10. Not many problems to complain about, and Android 12 brings some nice, much-needed additions to the stock Android experience. Like, for example, one-handed mode, slight improvement to customization, and a new visual experience that is, in my opinion, more pleasant to use than before, even though it isn't perfect. But the thing I would love to be improved is the overall smoothness of the experience on the X20, which is why I docked points, personally. I hope the speed at which the X20 received the update is also a good sign for the rest of the lineup jumping to Android 12, as the jump to Android 11 wasn't great as we all know. Anyway, it's time to hear from you. How was your update experience so far if you own the Nokia X20? Any bugs you would like to report? Let's try and work together to raise any issues so they can be fixed quicker. Please share your experiences with us below in the comments. That's it from me, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like the video to support the channel and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. And I shall see you in the next one.